As the sun sets here at this season of Pentecost, we thought we would say an evening prayer out here in the countryside. So an even song as the sun begins to go to rest. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Part of Psalm 85. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. We've been looking very much at the image, not only of the flames of the Holy Spirit lighting the Apostles' ministry, but also the river flowing on and on and sweetening everything it reaches. And our two lessons at Evensong speak of that river. The first from the Old Testament in the book Ezekiel. And here he describes water flowing from the side of the altar in the temple so that from our holy places the river of the Spirit can flow out into the world and sweeten everything it meets. Chapter 47 of the prophet Ezekiel. Then the angel brought me back to the door of the temple, and behold, water was issuing from below the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced east. The water was flowing down from below the south end of the threshold of the temple, south of the altar. Then he brought me out by the way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gate that faces toward the east. And behold, 
The water was trickling out on the south side. Going on eastward with a measuring line in his hand, the man measured a thousand cubits and then led me through the water and it was ankle deep. Again he measured a thousand and led me through the water and it was knee deep. Again he measured a thousand and led me through the water and it was waist deep. Again he measured a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass through. For the water had risen, it was deep enough to swim in, a river that could not be passed through. And he said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. As I went back, I saw on the bank of the river very many trees on the one side and on the other. And he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah and enters the sea. When the water flows into the sea, the water will become fresh. And wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live, and there will be very many fish. For this water goes there, that the waters of the sea may become fresh. So everything will live where the river goes. Fishermen will stand beside the sea. From Engedi to Enegliem, it will be a place for the spreading of nets. Its fish will be of very many kinds, like the fish of the great sea. But its swamps and its marshes will not become fresh. They are to be left for salt. And on the banks, on both sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail, but they will bear fresh fruit every month, because the water for them flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food, and their leaves will be for healing. So we use Our Lady's Song of Joy at her own capacity for fruitfulness in the birth of her Son, Jesus Christ. My soul magnifies the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our second lesson is written in the book of Revelation. It's right at the end, and once again, the river of life appears, the spirit which breathed on the face of the waters, now here as the river of life in heaven itself. This is the end of the vision of John. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, 
and they will reign for ever and ever. Wonderful images and images of the refreshing water flowing from the holiness of the temple but not staying there, multiplying and growing bigger and bigger with its flow as it goes down to reach the everlasting sea and trees with leaves of healing for the nations on each side. Truly a wonderful image for Pentecost when the Spirit is given so that those who are friends of the Lord at that time are given the power to express their joy and to share that good news to the people around in a language which all of them understand. So let's pray our evening prayers and give thanks for this day, give thanks for everything that Pentecost means in all the gifts given from the bounty of heaven to those of us who are living this life on earth and proclaiming the good news in word and in deed to one another. We pray for those who will have a difficult night tonight in circumstances of war or discomfort through climate change. And we think of those who are brave in their peacemaking. We pray for those who are sick at this time and we pray for the repose of those whom we have known and have loved. So we end with the prayer our Lord taught us and a collect for this night. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Lord God, whose Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, triumphed over the powers of death and prepared for us our place in the new Jerusalem. Grant that we who have this day given thanks for his resurrection may praise you in that city of which he is the light and where he lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you, upon all those whom you love and would pray for, this night and always. Amen. I don't think there could be many more peaceful places on earth than this, with its multitude of creatures making their home here in this refuge as the golden disk of the sun sinks down towards its setting. So have a quiet night and we shall meet again very soon.